episode two. Not entirely certain what the cliffhanger at the end of episode one was for. Was that just Will with the spectres behind him and that was about it? Was it just saying that they're always there? Um, because to me it sounded like they it felt like they were creeping up on him. Now, yes, I can understand that um, the spectres are going to be start taking interest in him because he is becoming an adult. Um, but I think it just felt tacked on as a cliffhanger because it's not alluded to at all in this episode which is a shame um, but you couldn't really do anything with it um, not without affecting the story drastically um, but other than that I did like the rest of the story um, the rest of the episode was uh, pretty good um, there were a couple of things I you know were a little few niggles here and there but um, it's basically Lyra going out into our world and interacting with people there um, and again stays true to the book first thing Lyra does when she gets into our world she gets run over by a car that's Lyra in a nutshell really um, they eventually go their own separate ways which is cool um, and uh, Lyra meets up with uh, Mary Malone who is the third principal character um, and um, yeah I'm I mean, I'm not overwhelmed by, you know, the performance, but yeah, it's good. Um, what I liked, what I really liked was um, the cave itself, the, the computer and um, how it portrayed dust. It was, you know, quite obviously like the, um, like the opening titles. That's what it looked like. Um, and then, of course, when... Lyra started interacting with it it got onto the symbols of the lithiometer like it does in the book and things like that which is great um, but uh, I do like the fact that it did look like the title sequence what was a bit annoying was it, it, it I, I've seen it happen a couple of times throughout the ser throughout um, the series as a whole in that there's some telling rather than showing it's like they're looking at the screen you can't really see what's going on the screen um, you're seeing Mary, uh, you know, being awed at what's going on on the screen and puzzled and shocked and whatnot. Um, but you can't see what's on and she's just describing what's on the screen. It's like, no, you tell us what's on the screen. You, you yeah, show Mary being um, shocked, fine. Um, but don't spoon feed us that. That's, and it ha it's happened a couple of times and it's really annoying. Um, it's it's not good writing don't do it please um but um yeah it's still got good moments i mean um will's story he actually goes off and sees his grandparents which is something that's not in the uh not in the books but is an interesting diversion um he actually goes to see the lawyer which i think he only phoned the lawyer up in the book um but he actually goes to see her um, and uh, then of course the two meet in the botanical gardens on a certain bench which I just completely flew by me but I've recently been hearing about a lot of fans just going on about that particular bench and yeah now that they're, they're saying it it makes sense and it's like yeah that's that's alluding to the end of the book, um, end of the series as well. So, yeah, I, I, I don't think they put that in there for purposefully. Um, I uh, also think that they definitely, almost definitely put it in purposely that uh, one of the items that uh, Mary was testing was an apple. Again, I saw it. I didn't think of the significance of it, um, even though the fruit in the Bible isn't technically called an apple, it's just called a fruit but it's commonly considered to be an apple or a fig um, but most people would say it's an apple and so um, for her to be testing an apple is quite significant um, and of course then she was also looking at the amber as well which um, is again going to be significant um, 
but yeah, overall, it's still quite good. Um, you had Lara meeting with Lord Boreal as well. Um, didn't really test out the uh, Age of the Skulls, which is, yeah, okay. It's not all that relevant, but it is something that uh, um, does get Mary to trust Lyra a little bit more. So, you know, you have to suspend your disbelief a little bit more there. But, um, yeah, I did like that. And then, of course, you've got the, uh, the witch's story. Um, which I'm fairly certain wasn't in the book. I mean, the, you know, them bombing the homeland and everything like that. I don't feel that was in the book. I don't remember it. Um, if it was, it was literally just like one line or something like that, which is probably why I don't remember it. And so they just elaborated on that bit. Um, they elaborated on um, the Cardinal dying and being uh, replaced and things like that, which I'm, I'm fairly certain are a lot of additions to the book, uh, uh, additions to the story. Um, which again, yeah, they, they they've changed the story that drastically for a lot of um, a lot of characters, and uh, yeah, it yeah, I, th I think it adds to it more than takes away. I mean, it uh, allows some of the uh, characters to have you know ongoing stories, whereas in a lot of them in in the books just stop once once they start going into new worlds and things like that. I'm about to go off and watch episode three, um, and. I'll have a review for that one as well.